Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, this is Mike the Great here to give you a review on Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. And uh, I actually just got out of the theater just seeing this movie, so um, I'm um, gonna give my, now I'm here to give my general thoughts on it. And I'm just so excited to be talking about this great film. Um, by the way, I just want to let you know that I will be talking about spoilers in this movie. So if you have not seen this movie, do not watch this video. All right, just go back and um, just watch uh, watch the movie and then come back here and then uh, you can listen to my uh, general thoughts. And I just want to let you know also this is my first YouTube video. So uh, my first YouTube video being a spoiler review. I know that's a little complicated, but um, so I'm just kind of learning what I'm doing here. So uh, just... Um, Go just head back and watch the movie and then uh, come back and watch my video and please and uh, subscribe also and just get to know me a little better and uh, to see like how I run things and like how I uh, and how my how my vision of comic book and superhero movies that uh, how that goes around but so anyway uh, let's get started uh, talking about the movie and uh, I think I just want to talk uh, for starters is Sam Raimi and uh, his directing I think Sam Raimi is just a great superhero director like. Spider-Man is probably one of my favorite uh, comic book movies, one of the best superhero movies from the 21st century, and just what 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 makes it just so great is the fact that he's able to give the villains and the heroes just some nice development, and um, with the story and like how he takes things, he he did that very well with Spider-Man 20 years ago, and he did that same thing with this movie, where Wanda and Doctor Strange spinning so much time with them, uh, their worldviews and like how they see like their aspects, like what they want to do with the multiverse. And it just all makes sense, like in light of what they're doing with the movie. And that's just what Sam Raimi is. I think it's just very, very great at doing. And then there's also Danny, Danny Elfman as the composer. He's probably one of my, one of the best uh, superhero composers uh, out of over the last, uh, over his years and his great track record with Batman and of course, he also worked with Sam Raimi during doing the Spider-Man movie 20 years ago. And uh, I think him and Sam Raimi do very well together. Just when you combine Sam Raimi's directing and his composing and then put them all together, and you just get the great storytelling with a good score. And uh, it just makes for a great, a great movie and a great time at the movies. And that's just what I thought worked so well from uh, behind the scenes with this movie. And what and what he, what the new privilege that he was also given with this movie is that they allowed him to tell this very dark, um, grounded story, and it's not just dark along with the storytelling, but it's also dark a lot with the action and like they they incorporated that rated that a lot inside of the action. And even though they uh, they kept it, they they, they did right. They kept the PG thirteen a little from most of it, but it's PG thirteen in a way where uh, it's made not for kids uh, 12 and under. Like, <laughs> there's a, a lot of horrifying action sequence in the scene and then a lot of horrifying elements. The movie starts off with one of these action sequences where Doctor Strange is fighting this giant octopus-like monster in the streets and then he rips its eyeball out of its head and it has a lot of similar uh, elements like, that kind of reminds me of the Suicide Squad a little bit. And um, we also get a zombie version of him, so uh, him from another universe, and then uh, he is taking over the mind of uh, him him as a zombie. Uh, just a lot of horrifying, just creep, uh, creepy stuff there to see there. Kind of, it's not it's not taken out of what if, by the way. I'll say that, I'll let you know there. It's not uh, taken incorporated like a zombie episode of what if, but just uh, another variant of him as a zombie uh, with just this horrifying visualization like to see is just like I don't know it's just pretty uh a lot of pretty nice stuff to see while it is horrifying it is pretty cool and uh there's also a couple of elements going back to from him from what if just seeing this dark uh, mystical version of him we uh we get a version of him that involves him with one eye <laughs> and uh, some pretty scary uh like um Illuminati like vibes going on in there and uh but just seeing all that stuff inside of an MCU movie. Uh, pretty amazing. I think, like, of course they marketed a movie like this, but this is probably one of the darkest movies in the entire MCU movie. It, it, it even has jump, a lot of jump scares a couple of times, some of them involving Wanda, and um, just a lot of uh, 
scary like moments uh, involving Doctor Strange and these action sequences. I can't remember all of them, but this certainly was one of the what was what it, I expected it to be, and it delivered. It was one of the most horrifying movies in the MCU. I would say. Now, one of the things that had me like really amping up, getting excited out of my seat was everything that I was seeing from the multiverse. Just uh, there was this, they have this whole section, of course, I think they showed it also in the trailers, uh, uh, well, they, there's this whole, uh, team called the Illuminati, and it involves a couple of different variants from the universe. One of them, we, uh, get, we actually get, uh, Peggy Carter from the What If series, so Captain America, Captain Peggy, Captain Carter, uh, from What If, incorporated in live action, and then there's also, um, Professor X, um, getting an appearance, and uh, Black Bolt, uh, Black Bolt. I don't know if you're familiar with the character of Black Bolt. Um, he is uh, like the guy who's just a very uh, different version of Black Canary, Marvel version of Black Canary. But if he, he says one thing, then uh, he just screams, and then just he will immediately kill you. So um, there's Black Bolt, and then Mr. Fantastic. We got a, uh, we actually got it, John uh, Kerensky, uh, John Kerensky. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name last name right. Uh, as Mr. Fantastic. Uh, which was pretty amazing. Like uh, we, they actually, we were actually hoping for it was rumored. Then they finally delivered. And then there was also Captain Marvel. We got Maria Rambo. Uh, Maria Rambo as the variant of Captain Marvel. Of course, if you're not Maria Rambo, Captain Marvel's friend from the movie and Monica Rambo's mom. That's who she is. So, so that's Maria Rambo as another variant. Maria Rambo in their universe is Captain Marvel. And um, of course, I already said Professor X. The fact that we got an X Men. Inside of the MCU is just great. I just seeing all these appearances, it was nice. Like, uh, of course, Far From Home already got me out of the edge of my seat seeing all the different Spider Man, and they continue that path along with this movie. Everything that they're doing with the multiverse up to this point is just amazing, just blowing my mind, and just so exciting to see. And just especially Professor X as a whole, Patrick Stewart returning to the role as Professor X was just like. So it's just so exciting to see. I know they already incorporated it in the trailer, so we kind of had a feeling that he was coming, but just just so glad that, that it was actually him, that they decided to bring him in. And even Peggy Carter as a, as a whole, uh, her itself, it's just the fact that they had incorporated like one of our heroes from What If into this movie, like inside of live action. Once she threw the shield, I was just like so in, in shock that they, actually, uh, that they actually decided to bring it in. I... Love the TV show What If, like, um, and I enjoyed a lot of the continuity, like, the fact seeing this different perspective of the MCU, and we got to see it with, Cap well, I mean, we know, I know we kind of saw, I, I, of course saw it in What If, but seeing Captain Carter incorporated in live action was um, pretty exciting, uh, different, Peggy Carter as Captain America from another universe, just so awesome, and uh, one of the things that I was really disappointed with that they did with these characters is that they killed them off like just right out of the gate from uh from after that one scene that we saw them inside of like just once we're introduced to like this all like new different perspective of the MCU like all these new characters Wanda comes in and just destroy demolishes them one by one even Black Bolt who who hasn't been in the MCU at all like and Mr. Fantastic they just the first ones to go, and we didn't even see any action, as much action reported in. Like, they didn't really get anything to do. They're just immediately taken away from us, like, right afterwards. And uh, just the fact that they decided to go with that, and just the moment, like, right after we were introduced to these characters in the MCU, just, I don't understand why they decided to kill them off so soon. Like, uh, especially Charles Xavier, Captain Carl. I was just like, so... But I'm like, I was like, no, how can you do this, Captain Carter? Like, I was hoping that they were going to keep her back to life. But no, literally all of them, the, all of them destroyed. Like, none of them could even live up, live up to Wanda's power. And uh, even so, in fact, they brought back Patrick Stewart to just uh, immediately just try and get into Wanda's head, but immediately be killed, like, with Wanda inside of his own mind. I don't know. Just... So disappointed, but hopefully this isn't the last appearance that we'll get from these characters. I really hope we'll get more more variants of them like this inside the MCU, and like we'll see if this like goes anywhere further. Hopefully, but um, there's also America Chavez, one of our new uh, 
lead characters inside of this movie. Um, just seeing the nice, like, uh, well, I mean, uh, to start off with the version of her character, she's like the girl travels through uh, different dimensions. Apparently, she's somebody who can travel through the multiverse uh, with no control over her power. And um, just nice that they incorporated that inside of a teenager. And uh, therefore, she she gets like a lot of nice banter back and forth, like with and Kevin, with Doctor Strange, and some nice chemistry along the way. And just she opens up into a lot of mystery of like where the MCU will take place. Just the fact like knowing this character who has with the ability to travel through uh, different pathways of the multiverse, and uh, the fact like how some of these guys are like after like after conquering her power, like. It, it brings into a lot of mystery, like, where the MCU will take place, and then, like, a lot of more implications to how the multiverse will work out, and, uh, just pretty exciting to see where else they're gonna go with their character, and, uh, just what that means for the rest of the MCU, so I thought she was a nice addition, even though I was, like, a little hard following her journey right in the opening, it was just, uh, a lot of fun with her, uh, but the real thing that you really gotta talk about in here is Wanda. <laughs> and uh, who was just like stealing like a lot of scene? I don't know. She was just stealing my attention throughout almost the entire movie. Just spending this much time like with her as like I didn't I didn't really expect her to get uh, that as much screen time in this movie as she did. Like she was she was a actually ended up being the movie's main villain, which I did not. Which I did not. They uh, I expected that we would get something like this out of Wanda pretty soon. Of course, they've. Uh, she's always been portrayed kind of as a villain inside of the MCU, uh, even going back to her first appearance in Age of Ultron. She's the one who takes controls of Tony's mind, and she's manipulating the Avengers, and she's kind of responsible for the creation of Ultron, giving Tony that vision and all that. So um, she's always been seen, even going back especially in WandaVision, she's been seen as the villain of the story. So uh, just... Or they like the develop with her character. Like this is the movie where we actually see her full blown, full blown super villain. Like uh, where she's the main villain of the story. Of course, she's uh, killing uh, a bunch of these guys. We it, it continues that story down from WandaVision, of course, of her losing everything and um, just her uh, uh, relationships like established. Like of course with her family and like trying to live uh, her own life and like but creating it getting it created for her, and uh, it continues down that path um, going by, like, with her children, of how she has these uh, few children variants created, and then she learns, like, in other multiverse, like, they're at, they actually exist in other multiverses, and um, she's trying, uh, getting her any power, like, to control the multiverse, to have, get, have what she wants, and have her children back with her, and, um, and she's, like, just uh, willing to kill anybody who gets in her way like with all the horror and trauma that she suffered She's just not gonna have it like if anybody gets in it gets in front of her like even though she starts off trying to be reasonable, but um, Well in her own way with Doctor Strange, but she eventually just goes full-blown psycho and then just demolishes Anything in front of her path and it's like and whether it's anything like around uh, at Sanctum Sanctorum she just like destroys all this is a high tech like security and uh, all the sorcerer supreme and the sorcerers and stuff. She even nearly kills Wong, the sorcerer supreme, and she of course kills all our friends from the multiverse. Uh, Wong Wong lives. Don't worry, Wong lives. Uh, don't forget that last comment I made. Not even I didn't expect like to see how powerful she is in this movie. Not even uh, Doctor Strange was able to beat her, and um, so the fact that they brought her to this level like. It all makes sense, of course. That, as I said earlier, with Sam uh, about Sam Raimi as a director, he's able to give the villains a lot of nice uh, development inside these movies, where it's like, even though you're not rooting for them, they're uh, that you have their sympathy, like you understand where they where they're coming from, and that's what they 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 kind of did that a little, of course, with Wanda, but I think they did a he did a much more job incorporating her as a villain, where it's like. I don't know, it just all makes sense in, like, what she's trying to do and what what she does uh, and um, how much villain portrayal, like, she gets inside of this movie. And then it leads to her um, immediate, like, uh, demise after the movie where she, where she finally realizes 
oh no, uh, my boys, they see me as the monster. Like, everything that I'm doing, I've become a monster. Like, after America Chavez, like, shows her, like, to her boys, and then they see what she's become, and then she, she finally sees what she's become, and she snaps out of it, decides to do the right thing, and then sacrifices her life for it. I, I don't think that, and, yeah, eventually she, uh, destroys the temple, and then the fellas collapse on her, so that this whole, uh, reality can end. I don't think that she's dead. Um, yeah, eventually they, they tease, like, her immediately killing off and falling into her demise, but, um, there's a chance that we might, I, I think there's a good chance that we might get to see, if she is dead, then, of course, there might be other variants out there we can see in the universe. Of course, she takes full control of one of their minds, but, um, just, um, well, I don't think this is the last, this might not be the last appearance that they can do with Wanda in this time, but, uh, uh, I, I'll really be excited to see where else they go with the character first, uh, further in, her character further in the MCU, and, um, just, but she was just a lot of fun. She was just amazing in this movie, and, uh, just made for, uh, all she did, did stick out as a great hero. I think she, she was a great villain. Uh, to come out of this movie, and uh, it will be nice to see the rest of her uh, incorporated inside the MCU if she uh, if she makes any more appearances inside of the MCU. Now, of course, this is a Doctor Strange movie, so I can't go through with the whole thing without talking about Doctor Strange himself. And uh, what well, I'll say for starters is some of the bad. I think this movie abandons a lot of plot lines that uh, we have from the first movie. Uh, Mostly because of the fact that, of course, he doesn't have the time stone, so a lot of differences in developing that uh, that arc. And, uh, of course, the the first movie was about building him up as the Sorcerer Supreme. And, like, the first movie, it was his journey becoming a Master of Mystic Arts, arts Master of the Mystic Arts, and becoming the Sorcerer Supreme. And, um, of course, uh, just, uh, of course, like, in Spider-Man No Way Home, it was, uh, we had figured out that Wong is now the Sorcerer Supreme because, of course, Doctor Strange was gone for five years. And um, so we pretty much only saw him as the full-blown sorcerer in, throughout Infinity War, Endgame, and Thor Ragnarok and all that. And this movie doesn't really, like, uh, focus in on some of those stuff. It abandons them, like, as if they don't really matter. So, uh, I, of course, they talk about it, everything that events that going on in Spider-Man, that uh, the events that went on in Spider-Man Away Home, like him in conversation with America Chavez, him and Wong at, at a bar, and but of course they, but it doesn't really, but they explain those things like as if oh they happen, but um, they, they don't really matter anymore to this movie, and this is Doctor Strange's story, so of course thought that they would continue to develop some of that stuff, but uh, of course they treat them as if they were nothing, and those are some pretty big plot. Uh, plot lines to go on like inside of those the Doctor Strange uh, mythology but of course they uh, try to lead away from some of that stuff because uh, so that they didn't overcrowd the story of course I know you don't want to spend too much time focusing thinking about oh him as the master of the mystic arts I wonder how that works but um, I think he uh, I think he still served a great purpose throughout the rest of this move the rest of this movie of course they continue that uh, plot line down with him Christine with and Christine Palmer what some of the mistakes that went on with his choices that went on in the first movie and uh, his relationship with her and therefore we see we're seeing a, a different version of of her that he that he is introduced to and like just the, the idea like how his relationship how different his relationship is seen by these different variants of him outside of the multiverse how he how their relationship goes on and like seeing different versions versions of him in perspective, like, kind of doing that same kind of story arc in What If, but, uh, taking it to, um, uh, but taking it to a darker and deeper level, seeing, like, of course we get a different version of Sorcerer Supreme and, like, another version, uh, where he, uh, of him making a sacrifice for himself. There's a, there's a reality version of him that involves, uh, him dying, and then making the dying sacrifice while, uh, I'll, I'll save that part for uh, you seeing the actual movie. But um, basically basically just seeing a bunch of these different versions like leading up to like these different elements of like um, what of, like what would happen like what other what are the other choices that Doctor Strange would make inside of these different universes and just um, feeding off like going deeper into all that uh, all that stuff and like moving along. It's just like all all pretty nice, pretty fun to see. 
and uh, just al allows the audience to connect with his character a lot better. And also because Benedict Cumberbatch, he's just he's just great in this role. Obviously, of course, like going back along throughout the first movie, I mean, uh, I mean, he's obviously can be funny and have a joyous personality, and he can also be a pretty depressed and dark character, of course, at times. And like it's he's written and the way the performance goes along is written in a way where you're rooting for him while he is arrogant and like doesn't make all these choices but i think he uh it, the way his art continued like the way that they played out his character he was just really it, it just worked really well and he he just got a lot of funny moments going along in this movie um one other thing i'd say like yeah there's also wong is um also pretty fun to see like on screen together like Benedict Wong just also has this nice humorous side to him. It was okay seeing Mordo returning. I, I I was surprised that they the direction they decided to go with him was just bringing back this bringing in this different Mordo from another universe instead of continuing the journey from that Mordo that we got from the that we know of from Doctor Strange one. So now we're introducing this different character, but it was nice seeing a different uh, him in this different perspective, like. With the character of Mordo, like, uh, yeah, he hates uh, he hates me in my universe and like, all that stuff. <laughs> so, um, that, all that is just pretty nice to see. And um, just a uh, just spectacular, like, way to continue his story, like, all as a whole. So that was my take on Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously, this is a pretty amazing film, uh, just by the content that you could see. Uh, of course, it's not my favorite MCU film, but uh, I just think it was still a nice experience. Just this and Spider-Man Far From, Spider-Man No Way Home, what, everything that they're doing with the multiverse has me just amped up, like getting out of my seat, just seeing all these new appearances, and I'm really excited like see what else they're going to do, and I can't wait for Thor, uh, Thor Love and Thunder to sh come out in theaters. So um, please like and subscribe uh, to let me know if you want more of my content. If you like this video, then... Uh, Maybe uh, share like uh, some of your thoughts and like what else you want to see me review, and uh, I will uh, see you next time.